has not been here before. You, Mongols, you, you, okay, I haven't been here before. All right, so I'll do my little introduction spiel. Um, this is the Cape Center. Culture, Arts, Preservation, and Enrichment. That's what the Cape stands for. And it is meant to bring all of that to the city of the Cape to Apple. This space just opened at the end of March. Um, so this is some of the initial programming for this poetry show. There are also some watercolor um, uh, classes, and we're working on building additional programming in the space. Amy Lee, who is going to join us shortly, is the facility manager. And if you have any ideas on programming, she would be the one to talk to. We also had a nice little article on our show in the hometown news, thanks to Chris over here. And uh, right now the space exhibit is down. That is going to become a photography exhibit over on that wall there. But you can see some of the existing ones. This is the bowl boards on the look of the Bart Zoo. If you have not seen that, there's a fiber arts by the, uh, I believe they're called Dirty Dozen Artists back here. And then just some historical things. Um, Artifacts, maps of Cape Canaveral, things that can teach you about the history of this place, that and also some of the artifacts out here. So it is a lovely space, a new space, something that we can do a lot with. And so take a look around if you didn't get a chance to do so already. And uh, moving on from that, my name is Lauren. I said that already, I think. I forgot. Um, <laughs> thank you for coming. We just started this show in uh, July. So um, I would like to continue to see it grow. I'm loving that I'm seeing new people here every month and I'm excited to hear poetry from all of you. So let's get started. I believe Chris was first on my list. I knew you were going to give that look like, I don't know why, but here you are, dude. Wear your red shoes again. I like it. Red yeah. shoes. You want to be sorry on this one? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, this isn't good. Oh, you me. always say that. Uh, wait till the end, said. and then well, no, I've taught myself this time. So this is less a poem and more a vent that rhymes. So that's cool too. Please uh, bear with me. Um, my name is Chris, by the way. Though, yeah. Hi, Chris. Hi. Uh, this is called The Phone Call. I swore I wouldn't write another poem that brought you all down. I made a vow to turn my prose towards poems around. I couldn't wait to come to the Cape Center and share it all until Wednesday, October 2nd, when I got a phone call. It was my boss telling me that I wasn't wanted anymore. Mm -hmm. I've worked there over three years, but I wouldn't reach four. I had worked my tail off for them throughout my career, and now here I was trying to fight back tears. I felt the sadness wash over me like waves crashing ashore, the weight dragging me down, debilitating every more. With emails to follow only making me feel worse, professionally it just feels like I'm cursed. It feels like I've been thrown in a hurricane and I feel like a dunce. Heck, I even lost a job evacuating from one of those ones. I admit losing my job is hurt me. That's just Chris luck. Am I awful, pathetic, worthless, do I suck? It's sad that these questions pop into my head, but now I must confront them as I look forward with some dread. Disinterested now, but soon the job search must be done, though I'm not sure I'll be able to work that hard for anyone. I won't say it's hopeless, though, even though it feels that way right now. I'd be so happy to write something positive for you, some way, somehow. Aww. It's 
question. So that's good, and that's awesome that you put those feelings you had to words, and you feel a little better for sharing it. All right, so stop saying before every time you perform. It's like your third time, and every single time you've been like, oh, this is terrible. Well, and that's terrible. No. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Keep going. Next, Jessica. Oh, Jessica. Okay. It's Jessica's first time here. Okay. And I'm lenient on time because we don't have a lot of people yet. So, you know. So when I write, I'm usually inspired because I see a story. I could write a poem about each of you. Not that I know you, but I would characterize you. Mm. So recently, I was watching um, Stranger Things. Amazing. So I love when I don't see um, a series when I have to wait for it to be released. Luckily, my husband and I started a few weeks ago and now we're like almost done with season four. But I was really inspired in season one when. Um, they were, the little boy that had, maybe it was like, he was possessed and they seen it. And he had to keep hiding how he felt. So, and he had to act like he was normal. And I wrote this. Seems like it's more of a female though. And it's called Here I Walk. Right. My jowls, though I'm young and taunt, have length like blue tick ears on hunt. They gather woes, a cellar of sorts, heavy, disorganized tools for the sport. Depressing darlings dressed to impress always stand at the ready in an emotional mess. I guard them with my makeup bag, lashes, lipstick, concealer pads. Those memories are mine and I will not share. I will hide into this layer this paint that I bear, meant to look naked, the natural look. I tape up my jowls, alter the cover of my book. My eyes, son of a bitch, lashes, you whores. I coat and I coat, but your pupils are still sore. The sights that you've seen should have kept them shut. Now the once crystal blue looks like traumatized mugs, always virgin on tears and searching for foes, telling back to stay tense, preaching danger to toes. To that problem, instinctively solutions arise. Keep your clothes looking sharp, step ahead of the lies. Taped, painted, and dressed, the day forced to start. I walk on this board game, protecting my heart. Rolling the dice as the hours tick by. If I'm lucky, someone will smile and I won't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> so, who's actually watched Stranger Things? Uh, <laughs> like the first season, a little bit. I don't think I finished the first season. Yeah. I watched the first season. And so, maybe the beginning of the second. I think, what did we just get through? Season five? Season five is. Is it okay? So it's only four. Okay. Um. I mean, obviously, I'm committed at this point. Like, I mean, I'm one of those people who watch the first season of the show, and it's like, all right, well, I gotta watch the rest of it. Bill, who you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, Bill. They did everything so wrong every <laughs> every season. So I love that you did that because I'm like, somebody's got to speak that kid. Good God. Yeah. It's a mess. I do recommend watching Stranger Things just, you know, you need a little more patience for the, you know, the, the fourth season. Yeah. Uh, Calvin, you're up next. Calvin. Is that right? Yes. Cool. How many poems can I read? Um, well, I mean, you have five minutes, but also, okay. nah, I'm a little lenient okay. tonight. <laughs> Ask us. I hope to I was swapping yourself. You become one of the undead. Dead eyes go on a murderous rampage. Nothing can stop them now. You know you will not survive. There's no fear behind your eyes. I will swallow your soul. Madness consumes every part of your brain. You become completely deranged. You start to hallucinate. Everything starts to come alive. Manic laughter, chainsaws, sawdogs, shotguns. Stents of blood and rotting flesh. Dead eyes go on a murderous rampage. Nothing can stop them now. You know you would not survive the job power from the ne ne Necro Comic Con out of Swallow Your Soul. Actually, 
diamond eyes, sunset smile, ravishing soul, translucent flower, infectious makeup, luscious lips, radiant glow, gleaming reflection. No. So I'm going to do a poem. It's called uh, The Love Religion. I thought it was a lie. When I was told that men fall in love harder than women do, I arrogantly laughed it off as a joke, oblivious to the fact that I was destined to become the punchline simply by meeting you. Admittedly, it was lust at first sight, more so than love, it curves. Whispered dirty thoughts to my senses as I dapped my boys in the huddle while we came to the consensus that shouty was bad. Entranced with the thoughts of having a chance at romance, I asked you to dance. You tangled with my intuition, entangled your heart with my inhibitions, and planted deep within this rhythm sprouted the concept of love as our tradition. Late night cuddles, huddled, seeking the warmth of your skin in early mornings, admiring the gleam of your smile as it shined, putting sun rays to shame. You asked, 
At what moment did I realize that you were the woman I wanted to be with now and forever? I rifled through a plethora of memories and emotions only to realize that these feelings did not emerge suddenly, but they were crafted by the hands of sacred divinity, sculpted by the gods and adorned by angels. No matter the point of view or angle perceived, our love had become our vision and a sight for the sore eyes of those who felt they were trapped in everlasting loops of heartbreaks and headaches we held hopes high. Our love is music, a tune that swoons, sweeps me off my feet as I surf on sound waves of ecstasy, a concert of common consonances that disconcerts my demons, your love is my salvation. A safe haven, and heaven knows that hell is real, and this world can drive a sane man crazy, and as crazy as it sounds, going crazy over you has kept my sanity intact, you are my addiction. And each fix just keeps me more fixated on our future. I bathe in the bliss of each overdose of adoration and suffer the results of withdrawal when I'm without you, you are my medicine. When I'm so sick of the world and I can hardly breathe and I've been told so many lies, I don't know what to believe. Your love is my truth. They still question if God exists, but your presence is my proof. This love is a home built with four walls of faith and hope as the roof. Our union is the universe quantified by quantum leaps of quality that cause the cosmos to blush. A soulful magenta, we are soulmates. Matched based upon a mix of miscellaneous misplacements, your love is my destination. And my arrival guaranteed my survival, you are my life. Because I love living just as much as I love loving you. You are my heartbeat and blood flow. The H2 to my 1O, the O2 replacing the CO. You are the elements that I would die for. Our love is chemistry. And honestly, we love more arrogantly than most because we know no one can match this explosive pack of passion we've packed in a package comprised of pain and pleasure that will persevere even when we pass away because our love is not until death do us part. Our spirits are bonded for an eternity. Death is just a new start to ask them. At what moment did I realize that you were the woman I wanted to be with now and forever? I know now it's every time I gaze upon your face and see that this love is sincerely ours. It's every time the touch makes my senses holla, hallelujah. It's every time, despite all doubts and naysayers, we are still blessed enough to believe in us, the love religion. I share. I appreciate y'all. I only had the energy to do when I was at work all day. <laughs> I am a manager at the Men's Warehouse in the Air. <laughs> Not that anybody, you know, if you ever need a suit or you know, need a tie, so I'm going to holler at you, boy. All right, all right. And um, I also, I do host and I do MC other type of events, and I do make myself available for hire to perform in any type of events, too. And I know I live all the way down in Palm Bay, but I'm all about trying to bring art to all of Brevard right now. Or really all of, like, that's why I was out in Orlando and everything, but I, I'm willing to travel. I like to go out. I'm really trying to bring all of Brevard County some art to, for some culture so that we can enjoy that more here because I feel like, I know for myself growing up, I grew up in Melbourne and I always felt like I had to go to Orlando mm -hmm. or I had to go to Miami or Jacksonville to find a scene that had some kind of creativity and artists and like-minded people. But it's a lot of us here. We just all over the place, we're scattered. So that's why I love, I love supporting your events and I'm always gonna be here to support your events and I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. 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 November 21st. My show, yeah, my show is every third Thursday of the month. My next one is going to be November 21st at Jamrock Grill, all the way okay. in Palm Bay, off Malabar Road. On Thursdays? Yeah. They do the music open mic the other nights, right? They do uh, music the rest of the month on Thursday nights? Where? Jamrock? Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I started doing my show last, like, maybe last month, two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. I live in Palm Bay too, yeah. yeah. So, so let's, let's talk about that for a yeah. second. Like, just be honest. Uh, I was told several months ago that I gotta find the art community out here. So, mm. I'm not from Florida. I'm actually from Maryland, but you know, I was in Orlando for a bit. I worked in the Car Arts Foundation, started volunteering there, ended up accidentally founding a poetry show here we are two and a half years later. But something wanted me to say at the beach, and so I sometimes wonder if it's for this, if it's for, for advocating. And we need that right now, not just bringing the arts to everybody, but the arts 
advocacy. We've lost funding for Florida. I don't know if anybody, all of you know, they cut funding in for Vargas this year. But there was so much protesting from the organizations that lost it that they gave it back with some fuss, except for the Renaissance folks, I believe, because there was some bad blood there. They're, 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 they're worked out. They're worked out? Yeah, they're, they're moving from Wickham to uh, a different part of Melbourne. That's just recent then. The uh, last few months, yeah. Yeah. As so, far as I know, they bought their own property. Okay, all right, well, that's, that's good. So, um, St. Lucie, uh, they cut their funding a couple they months got it back. They did get it back. Yeah. But again, yeah. people were out there protesting and doing town meetings and being like, you know, what the F, you guys, you know, they're just, why are you taking the arts out of everything, out of the community, out of the schools, out of everywhere? I, 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 where would some of those be without that? I'm an engineer. I'd be out of my mind if I didn't have this other side of my brain to deal with, right? So, you know, I, I've had the pleasure after starting my internship here and doing some research in Brevard County and, and meeting some good folks. I've had the pleasure of meeting a lot of artists around here. There are a lot of us, but we're not connected mm -hmm. at all. You told me there used to be shows, but they were 10 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And I haven't been to poetry shows. So you get songs starting his, I'm trying to do this one, and we got other things going on. So, I mean, I ask everybody here, find your people, find us, find your tribe. Like, we gotta, we gotta build it back up. And I know the Brevard Cultural Alliance has done um, some work to make sure that they do not lose the funding this year. And it's sad that we have to prove it, but, you know, the more that we, get together for sure. We can continue to do that. And you know, Orange County, I mean, Orlando has a lot going on, but they're hurting too. There are people that have had to close because they're dependent on that, that government money, that government funding. So it's not a lot of us here yet, but we're getting there. And there are a lot of folks to, there are a lot of folks around here to support. So I hope to see you guys at some other shows, some other locations, doing some things. Like, just gotta build it back together. Um, we can remember the deck, right? Yeah. Me, yeah. Yeah, alright. Okay, sure. That's what we'll do. You're so right. weird chilling. Like, oh, yeah, 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 sure. I put in my name, I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, you did. Oh. I did? Yeah. Oh, I thought I'd like, I thought I signed up for like, a, like everything. Oh, maybe you did. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks for the introduction. You're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> <laughs> my, my name is Jason. Uh, I'm from Paul Bay too, you know, crazy, like, uh, also in tech, also, you know, I have to do the stuff to keep from going crazy, and trying to get some stuff going on, you know, getting around, so, yeah, we definitely need to the, the talk, man, so, okay, okay, so, uh, a can of the goose makes for life, bonded pairs roam from Canada to Florida annually for up to 25 years. I don't get how these dumb, foul-tempered, entitled, and overrated shit slingers mm -hmm. can manage to make love last so much longer than my best effort so far. Maybe I make it too complicated. One time in Minnesota, I saw a Canada goose fly into a car and lay on the freeway, barely twitching, as traffic in that lane stopped. It's illegal to molest Canada geese in Minnesota and drivers inexpertly merged around the blockage. The dying goose's mate waddled back and forth, honking mournfully. Maybe I was projecting, but I heard the bargaining, the denial, the anger. A stout Norse god of an animal control technician beat cardboard together to try to usher the bird off the road, but it turned on him and sank its beak full into his left eye socket, Ooh. blood gushing across the yellow bill and streaming down the worker's face like a modern day Odin in overalls, flanked by a goose triumphant in place of ravens. The honk became one of celebration and glory, a blow struck against the hostile world that had robbed it of its shelter and solace, the partner on the wing they'd flown with for a decade, raising generations of goslings that had moved on long since. Odin's backup arrived and pushed the bird into a cage, 
and I can hear the haunting honks echo in the empty night as the city's truck vanished in the distance. And that's that thing. That was the end of that. <laughs> I don't know what that is, actually. I don't know if it's a poem or what. I just wrote it, so. It's a great name for it. Um, so I don't, there's usually two rules I follow when I perform, right? Well, three, but two is I don't like to read from the page because I like to like look at you and see how you're reacting. It's kind of fun. And I don't like to introduce my work because I feel like, you know, the work should stand on its own. Right? You know, if it's right. So if I have to tell you what it's trying to say before I say it, then it's pretty much a failure of the writing kind of thing. All right? So, but sometimes um, I just like to prepare people for what I'm about to inflict on them. Mm -hmm. All right? So uh, politics in this country has gotten a little out of hand lately. I don't know if y'all know, have noticed that kind of stuff. People were talking about people eating pets. <laughs> People were talking about, actually went up on stage in front of a national audience and said that there's people eating babies, right? There's actually the people are eating, they're trying to use that to justify some kind of policy or a vote decision, right? Um, I don't know if you guys know who Jonathan Swift is. Anybody know who Jonathan Swift is? And show of hands? Yes. Okay, all right, so. That's what I thought when you said that. Then. Okay, okay, uh, Jonathan Swift, uh, he wrote the uh, Gulliver's Travels, right? Yeah. Okay. Also, famously, when the uh, English were having a hard time with the Irish, um, he came up with a modest proposal for how to deal with the Irish peasants. Anybody striking me? Okay, so I just want to say this is a, one of the first and most famous examples of satire. All right, so I'm not actually advocating the actions in this piece. So please don't think that I'm some kind of monster. All right, that's all I'll say. But, but basically, I've, I've updated a modest proposal for modern times, and it's called My Simple Plan. Um, my simple plan by Jason Eaton with apologies to Jonathan Swift. And it's also, I gotta say, um, it was updated to uh, be written at a third grade reading level so more people could actually understand it. Right? So, um, it is really sad to walk around and see so many poor families who can't afford to take care of their children. These mom and dads can't find good jobs, so they have to beg for help. Their kids are hungry and don't have the things they need to grow up healthy. This problem is getting worse. And it's hard for the rich people who own houses to watch it happen. Right now, a lot of poor people are having more and more kids, and there isn't enough food or money to help them all. The rich people, especially the good Christian ones who own houses and rent them to poor families, have to pay a lot in taxes to help these poor families, and it's not fair to them. After thinking about this for a long time, I came up with a plan that can help everyone. My idea will make life easier for the poor families and also help the rich people save money and even make more money. Here's my plan. Instead of letting poor families struggle to take care of their babies, they can sell their babies to the rich Christian landlords when the babies turn one year old. The rich people can use the babies as food. This way, the poor families will get money and the rich people will have delicious meals without spending so much on groceries. A one-year-old baby is just the right size to make a good meal. The baby could be roasted, stewed, or grilled, and one baby could feed a rich family for a whole week. This will also create new jobs because people will be needed to prepare and cook these meals for restaurants. This plan has many good things about it. First, poor families will get money to help them live better. Second, rich landlords won't have to feel bad about how poor their tenants are because they'll be helping them by buying the babies. Third, the country will spend less money on taking care of poor people because there won't be as many mouths to feed. Finally, we'll have a new kind of food that people will want to buy, and that will help our economy. Some people might think this plan is mean or cruel, but I want them to think about how things are right now. Poor families are already suffering, and many of their children are starving. My plan gives these children a purpose and helps everyone. The rich people will even feel good because they're helping the poor in a way that works for both sides. Please don't suggest other ideas like giving poor people more money, building cheaper homes, or finding them jobs. Those ideas are slow and expensive. My plan is fast and easy. And lastly, I don't have any children to sell, and I won't make any money from this plan. I'm just trying 
to help the country find a way to solve this problem. Thank you. I thought that was fun. I have one more, if you can tolerate it. It's not quite as bad. All right. Um, it's about our state's favorite superhero. Mm -hmm. I have been the butt of your low-hanging jokes for about as far back as I can remember, but I've got to admit that ain't too far. Between the K2 booze and blunt force trauma, about the only thing that sticks to my head anymore is the pillow and some macaroni and cheese sometimes when I'm stabbing my brother over dinner. When beer is your coffee, life takes on dimensions that the Yankees can't understand. When the zombies attack, you got to throw bricks or raw chunks of crumpled concrete, whatever you've got on hand, really, but you can't do nothing. And when you live like me, it's better to forget that your wife collected money for your dead sons when they were still alive and tried to bite your parts off when you were too tired for relations. I got seven friends a day dying from prescription overdose. And I got 100,000 brothers rotting right now in prison. I stabbed a bear fan in the spur of the moment and shot my own damn self while bowling on a Tuesday night. I got caught masturbating on a public boat ramp. What I'm trying to say is that if you've been through what I've been through, you'd get a beer while fleeing police too, because you'd know it would be a while before your next one. And if you ever let the buzz wear off and the memories catch up, you're going to have a hangover that could kill that skunk ape that I saw that night behind the tool shed trying to get frisky with an alligator. And you can't hear about me without smirking when you're silent there, but for the grace of God, go I and I. I don't blame you for feeling better than me. We're each just as we was created, but don't act like you don't envy me. My name brings them to their knees, killing from Glengarry to Synecdoche, San Paul to San Chope. I got 400 million hits on Google and 108,000 followers on Twitter. Watch me come up and I'll be bigger than anonymous, but I want you to know my name. I am Florida Man. I will get a blowjob from a hooker with my toddler in the car and throw eggs at the courthouse. I will sometimes be attacked by alligators. I will be often be found butt naked in the wrong person's house or apartment, or on the side of the road, proposing to a dead pit bull, or making love to it. I love my little dick-shaped state that you can't take your greedy eyes off. Born in the fountain of youth, washed in the blood of conquest, trained by mad raving pirates, stolen from the Seminole, plundered by capitalist greed, and shaped by drug cartels and the space race. This is a land of endless freedom, strapped down by dickhead cops. And if you're too scared to push it to the edge, how can you feel like you're better than me when I fall off? You rely on God's grace to keep you out of danger because you can't handle this hot, wet kitchen. kitchen. Like a caged canary laughing at a raging wild turkey, you hold your manhood cheap, cheap, cheap. While I speak, that's a Richard III reference. And I'll leave you with the words tattooed across my neck. Only God can judge this soul. And yes, I know I spelled judge wrong. I am Florida man, and I will chew your fucking face off. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I got. <laughs> so I was reminded of uh, a couple of things. Um, has anybody read Voltaire? Yeah, no. Candied. Nobody's read Candied. <laughs> so that is probably one of the first satirical novels to ever come out. I think it was, what, 1700s, 17, 17th century um, that he wrote it. And I only know about it because my, my dad told me about it. Um, and Candide, this, this, this man, his, his life just goes to just absolute fucking shit. And his mentor is always telling him, like, this is the best of all things. This is the best of all things. This is the best of all things. Like, even when Batman's dying and, like, his body parts are falling off. Like, this is the best of all things. This is how it's supposed to be. So I was thinking about that when you were reading about um, you babies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking, not everybody can handle satire. And, um, <laughs> I was the first to time I read that book, I was like, I, I, didn't, I just I didn't get it. I was too young to get it, but I highly recommend everybody read Candy. It's very short, and it's just it's funny. Um, but it's uh, draw some parallels to things going on right now. 
The other thing that I was wondering if you were going to get into, but you didn't, I said to somebody earlier today that remember, remember, the 5th of November is going to take on a new meaning here in a couple of weeks. Oh, that, that election day is the 5th? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, when the Catholic tried to blow up a uh, parliament. Guy Fox Day, yeah. they tried to blow up the English parliament on the 5th of November, mm -hmm. and then they made that god awful movie, V for Vendetta. Oh. Okay, watch. You look upset. That was a really good movie. It was okay. It was a much better comic. I mean, <laughs> that old Mormon with an English accent doesn't work, but it's a pretty good movie, and I recommend everybody watch it in the next two weeks. And I plan to scream, remember, remember the 5th of November on that day. And I don't know, shave my head like Natalie Portman did or something. Yeah. No, not really. I'm going to keep my hair. Why is that even the Oh, it's down. It is a bit old, but. Yeah. So, was there anybody else that wanted to read here? Or read again? Anybody? I got hours of numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I totally understand um, energy. Not everybody gets, uh, sometimes I'm like, look, I, I just can't. Or you read a poem and you're like, all right, nobody talked to me for a while because that was a lot. Um, my family did that to me once on a Zoom meeting and I was, my mom was like, turn off the camera. Because it's just, I was like, I started to melt. So uh, you have to come again to hear me read. About that. Mm. Okay. So short night, but I appreciate you guys all being here. Please spread the word. Tell your friends. Follow me on um, Instagram. It's the underscore poetic engineer. I share this show. I share the Orlando show. I share other people's shows. Um, we're really few of us are that have met in the last few months. We're like really trying to bring Brevard artists together. I'm like a nobody that's not from the state, but it's it's what I do. So um, I would love to see you all again and see all of you supporting each other and other things. That thing Sunday. That I do. Is that you doing that with the jazz band this weekend? That's that part. Kristen Warren. That's what? Kristen Warren. I think, this is I think so, maybe there's like a they're doing like an open mic with the jazz band in Orlando, and uh, Curtis was yes. talking about it. That's not me. Not you, we're just saying that it was something that, uh, um, I don't know. I'm not sure what that is. Okay. And I'm not sure if it's at Tim McCraw, because Tim McCraw might be doing some concerts this week, too. Yeah. Um, please, if you took any pictures, any videos, share them. Tag the city, um, city of Cape Canaveral. Tag myself so that I can share it. Um, next month, we are probably going to switch to the third Sunday. Everybody hear this? Third Sunday? Third Sunday next month. Or Wednesday. Third, okay. What, what damn day is this? I don't know. You're confusing me. I'm like, wait, what day is this? <laughs> All right. Erase that. Erase that. The third Sunday is my other show. Third Wednesday. And, and this, no, third this Sunday is my other show. And this has been a weird week because the third Sunday was the same week as the fourth Wednesday because they were like, Oh, that, October started, and, yeah. and I messed up. So next month, because of the holiday, instead of this show being the fourth Wednesday, it will be the third Wednesday. November 20th. November 20th. Okay. So some of you signed up, and it does say November 27th, and we'll have to change it, but it's going to be November 20th instead. No, you signed up, and you signed up. All right. We got it. Cool. All right. Have a good night. <laughs> hey. Hey. All right. Look around. Do you release us? Or